CDKN is an alliance of six different organizations, including NGOs, uh, academia, and the private sector. We have been supported by the UK and the Dutch governments to provide assistance to developing countries for climate compatible development. It's a five year program of work to the value of about $100 million. And, and, you've, and you've just launched uh a rapid response unit, is that, is that correct? A climate finance advisory service? We have. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. What does that do? Who does it aim to, aim to help? Yeah, so yesterday we were very happy to announce the launch of the climate finance advisory service. This is an initiative to help policymakers and negotiators from developing countries to be more influential within global climate finance negotiations. And uh, it consists of a, a number of different services that they can make use of uh, for free. Uh, they include a rapid response unit um, whereby uh, developing country policymakers and advisors can ask questions in theatre you know, while they're in negotiation and or in the margins. They can ask questions about climate finance to a group of advisors that we've pulled together to help them to make the responses in those negotiations that best represent their positions. The service also includes some briefing papers and a knowledge management system and also some, some research into some of the more complex issues that require more in-depth analysis uh, so that ultimately they can become more informed, um, more knowledgeable and more influential. I mean, have they suffered uh, in the negotiating process, the developing nations, as a result of not having had a loud enough voice uh, at the negotiating table? I mean, we see here in Doha at COP18 the complexity of some of the negotiations going on, 194 countries, endless committees. I mean, presumably it's difficult for anybody um, to, to, get, to get a grip of that, to, to find out how their voice can best be heard. That's absolutely right. I think they have both uh, struggled to have the same kind of voice as some of the more industrialised, richer countries in the world. These negotiations here within the UNFCCC, as well as those that are now taking place within the Green Climate Fund, are incredibly complex and incredibly difficult to follow. You know, there are multiple meetings, there are multiple issues, there are multiple stakeholders to engage with. And some of the, the poorer countries in the world often only have one or two representatives to come here. They're spread very, very thinly. They find it very hard to keep on top of the negotiations. And therefore, I think that also leads to a, to a, a breakdown in trust because they don't feel able to, to offer up a negotiating position when they don't fully understand everything that's on the table. So this is an attempt to help them to have greater voice and therefore greater influence. And I think ultimately that's really important because the poorer countries are the ones with less voice are actually the ones that are impacted hardest and fastest by climate change.